Thank you for watching the World Community Magazine's Hour of Power Live on Facebook with your hosts Edward McQueen and April Garner. Yep, you're coming to we're coming to you live. Good evening, I'm Ed McQueen, or your your host today uh, for our weekly program. It's now, as you, most of you know, is on Tuesday, 7 p.m. Um, I'd like to welcome you to welcome you to today's program. We have an ex, exciting informational, uh, I'm going to call it giveaway today. Uh, we are, uh, have some very interesting guests. Uh, one, as most of you know, uh, will be updating us on our uh, uh, the, the latest COVID. Uh, pandemic, and secondly, um, we 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 got impressed over a, a past a number of weeks ago, and um, uh, we think you're going to in, in, enjoy the this, this new organization that has come into play that is uh, that has already made an impact, uh, especially on to, in one of our um, foremost organizations around here uh, that's already making an impact itself. So um, we we want to uh, en engage you into this uh, this um, our show today, and hopefully you can get the, the most out of, out of both of them. Okay. So uh, without further ado, let's we're going to start with uh, uh, what we think is uh, our most um, knowledgeable person that has been giving us updates for the past, I guess for the past year or so, especially on this. Program and uh, April's uh, network. Uh, this is Dr. McIver, Dr. Winston McIver. Well, um, uh, good evening, Doc. Hey, how you doing? Good. Uh, you look well today. Thank you. It's been a long day, <laughs> long day. So I'm um, glad <laughs> looking okay. You're looking okay. <laughs> uh, well, uh, Doc, uh, Doc, I'm telling that the audience and the, and the audience are, are going to be looking for some. I'm sure we, as you as you usually have very interesting uh, statistics and update information on um, this pandemic uh, that we're all trying to shake and break, and it's causing um, to to some of us uh, a great deal of anxiety and 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 some for some pain, I guess. So, uh, but statistics and and there's nothing like having a good knowledge base on this to make us help make informed decisions. So we welcome you to the program today to, to do just that for us. Um, uh, first of all, before we, before we go any further, uh, if, if the audience didn't know, uh, of course, they couldn't attend the event that was this past weekend, past Monday, and you were uh, awarded the Humanitarian <clears throat> of the Year Award by the uh, uh, Carolina African American um, uh, Heritage Foundation, and that's headed by the the late uh, Benny Swan's wife of Miss uh, Marcella Swans, and uh, understanding that the 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 event was was quite a, quite a success. Uh, we had the MC of Mr. Reggie Dyson, and uh, and I think Miss uh, Swan herself, I believe. Okay, right. So if if I'm incorrect, there just you can just elaborate on that. A lot of time, but anyway, welcome to the program and congratulations again. Being humanitarian uh, of the year award. Um, okay, thank, you. thank you, thank you. That was uh, yeah, you are. uh unexpected, um, uh, most appreciated, and like I told him, I do what I do because I'm supposed to do what I do. So um, I thank thank them and 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 that kind of thing. Um, I know, Brother McQueen, we talked uh, about COVID, and I think that the information that I'm going to give tonight is just going to kind of uh, focus primarily on South Carolina, you know, right. at a different time. You know, we can talk about nationwide, worldwide, but right. uh, uh, we just focus on uh, on South Carolina. Um, and, and I'll kind of give some statistics. I like to do a lot of comparison and contrast. So, so. The first thing I'll start off with is what we call the seven day average of new cases. Now, a month ago, the seven day average of new cases was just a little over 1,000 in South Carolina. 
a little over 1,000, 1,019 to be exact. Uh, this past seven days, the number was 8,400. So it's gone, the seven day average has gone from a little over 1,000 to around 8,400 in a seven day average of new cases of COVID. Now, that's important because what it says, what it says is that this is definitely passing in the community. It's definitely spreading in the community. Now, I want to make a, a differentiation before I go any further, because I'm getting a lot of questions about COVID, COVID-19, the different variants. Um, this Omicron variant appears to be less deadly. However, it appears to be much easier transmitted. Um, as I told other people, you know, we'll be talking about COVID-19 in 2025 and 2030. This will so eventually. Like a, yeah, a flu. You know, the thing about it is, is with the flu, you're still talking about, you know, anywhere between 20 to 50,000 deaths a year attributed to the flu. So, you know, there's still a lot there. Um, however, with the way that COVID is, is mutating and changing with these different variants, although this Omicron variant appears to be less, less dead, we don't know if the next variant will be more deadly, even less deadly, but it certainly is just as transmissible. Um, this past week, I had over 60 patients uh, visits with COVID. Now, the way we handle COVID, COVID in my office is if I get a call from a patient that says they've got COVID, we set them up for a telemedicine visit. In other words, I want to know exactly how they're doing. I want to know what symptoms are they having. Because some of these symptoms range from very mild to just a little bit more than, you know, a cold. Um, however, these people that I saw last week were sicker than that. They weren't necessarily sick enough to be in the hospital, but they were sick and they were sicker than what the average person would have with with flu-like symptoms. So as these variants change, symptoms will change. We see now with this variant, there tends to be more of a throat issue with this variant. You know, more people coming in with sore throats, you know, as opposed to previous variants where they had more chest issues, lung issues, even some diarrhea. Um, but this tends to be more of an upper respiratory throat type situation. Um, where people get confused between strep, the flu, and 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 COVID. And just to talk about that, flu is on the rise too, which is what we expected in the medical community. As people are wearing masks less, the flu will, you know, come back more. People are kind of confused. Why we why aren't we talking about the flu anymore? Last year, in 2020. <laughs> yeah. 20. But we weren't talking about the flu because you know, people were wearing masks, you know, now that, you know, more people have gotten vaccinated, um, the guard has kind of been let down. You're always going to have that segment of the population that's just not going to wear a mask at all. Um, but that's been a big contributor to the flu uh, increasing, um, particularly in this area. So, so, so should we be more aware now? I mean, I mean more concerned now. That that could be a double whammy, regular flu. Uh, well, definitely, be, yeah, definitely yeah. because you know, you know, the thought is is that you know, let's just give a typical scenario. I would just give this scenario: you got a kid that comes home from college. They come home from college and they pass it to somebody. That somebody can pass it to somebody else. So again, the concern is is the transmissibility of this. The easy the spread, how easy the spread is. Um, one of the other things that we look at too is that something called the posit percent positivity or the positivity rate, meaning of those that get tested, what percentage of those come back positive. Now, an ideal best practice positivity rate is less than 5%. Keep that in mind, less than 5%. Last month, the positivity rate in South Carolina was 26%. That's about one in four. Now the positivity rate is 33%. That's one in three. So again, we see that these numbers are going up. Again, people aren't necessarily 
dying at the rates that they were dying before. However, people are still getting sick. And the long-term question about if a person has asthma, has COPD or emphysema, what kind of effect could this have on their lungs long term? So that part, that part of the story is still to be to, to be determined. But the positivity rate is one in three, or 33 percent now, as opposed to a month ago, it was one in four or 26 percent, with best practices being less than five percent. So for the audience's sake, I, I know what best practices Mm -hmm. I don't know what that is. Uh, there may be a few of us. To, we're right. Not, you know, what, so when we say best, that. Right. Essentially, best practices simply means the ideal scenario. In this case, in talking about COVID, ideally, where would we want that percent positivity rate to be? And we'd want it to be less than 5%. Okay. Okay. And right now. Okay. So, so uh, let, let's, let's deal with the, um, the different age groups. Uh, do you have any statistics on that in terms? Um, I don't have any any statistics on that, but I can tell you that, you know, children are being affected more. It appears with this variant, uh, it appears to be uh, being affected more. You're still seeing a lot of hospitals, hospitalizations, children's hospitals, uh, particularly being affected um, at, a, at a high rate. Um, you know, there's something called RSV, respiratory syncytial virus, which is a virus that can happen in kids during winter times. And the concern is if a young kid gets RSV, particularly a baby and uh, COVID, that it could be, you know, very rough for that child getting through it. Odds are they'll get through it. But again, it can cause for an uncomfortable week or two or however. Um, one thing I want to mention, too, is that um, last week there were over 113,000 cases in South Carolina of COVID. And that shattered, that shattered the weekly, um, weekly um, positivity uh, numbers so over of over 113,000 cases. Today, DHEC reported approximately 13,000 new cases. The previous high in uh was 7727 the previous one day high now I'll give another comparator right before thanksgiving we were only we were having less than 600 cases a day less than 600 there was 13000 cases of covid today diagnosed in south carolina and that's just through DHEC. that's not even counting the home tests So just to kind of give you a comparison on, on what we're looking at, what we're seeing uh, in the medical community. I mean, it's hard to get tests now. And DHEC was so overwhelmed that it was taking sometimes a week to get these results back. Um, I, I, as recently as today, I heard on, on the news that um, the Biden administration is going to be issuing, I think, next week, some yes. 400 million yes. uh, self-tests. Right. It's either going to be four or eight tests per household. Um, yeah, four, four per household. Yeah, yeah. At first they said eight, but then I think they knocked it down to four right now just right. to make sure supply and demand, supply and demand issue right now for that. Um, so, again, I think that's good. Um, I think, you know, the more information you have, the more you can govern yourself accordingly when it comes down to infectious diseases. Uh, such as COVID, which we've never seen anything like this before. Um, so that's that's one of the one of the big big things that we talk about. Um, go ahead. But should there be some concern about whether your average citizen is capable of <coughs> carrying through with the test, especially the, the self test that you can get at the drugstore or or, or um, grocery store to now today. Um, the instructions are, they're, they're not, well, to some people, they may not be that simple. Okay. Right. Well, yeah, okay. they, they, they try to make them as simple as possible, but again, they this try. is all, yeah, this is all in the, um, in the hands of the person that's doing it. I mean, you got to get a good enough specimen to, uh, <laughs> make sure that you got an adequate, adequate sample. 
to test. So again, that's another part of it. You know, if you're having to do these things yourself, you know, you don't stick that swab back so far. And so, um, yeah. so, so that's a part of it too. Um, but again, I think having the availability of the test definitely um, will help. Well, and the reason why I brought that up, Doc, was that um, one of the instructions um, was that you have to download an app. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you got some people who do, uh, who's so afraid of a computer that uh, right. they'd rather jump out the window. Yeah, to download an app, that feature is uh, to try to track positive cases. Um, so I, there's a number of factors that are out, and some of them have this app, this available, this uh, ability to um, download it, and they can kind of track it in real time to see if there's any clusters in certain areas. But again, you have to okay. be somewhat computer savvy to, or tech savvy somewhat to, to be able to pull that off in a lot of cases. Yeah, uh, but I, I would, would like to tell our viewers that, and, and of those of you who, who are not adapted to computers, that uh, there's an option on the, uh, in some of these kits where um, they will show you what the, the results will look like for positive and negative. And um, you may not have to download the app in order to, for, for the app to read it. Mm -hmm. okay. They do mm -hmm. have instructions to that point. But it's so it gets so confusing, you know. Right, right. So we, we, uh, um, we one of our uh, brother Kevin Mishy was here. Wanted to know what percentage of the population would you say is dealing with long term effects of COVID? That that's a good that's a good uh, question, uh, brother Mishy. Um, and we're not quite sure those numbers because we have to kind of sort out what long term um, issues mean. Um, some of those, some of that data will go into people that have had strokes or heart attacks that are related to, you know, that COVID related. Um, some of it is, um, you know, uh, neurological situations with uh, what we call COVID brain. You know, that's part of it. You know, so it's a, so that part, that part will be determined at some point in time. But then they have to sort out exactly what metrics they're using to uh, to determine uh, long term. Um, long term from from what? So that, I, I don't know if it's uh, if everyone if anyone has ever asked this, but um, what, were there any COVID cases on 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 your football team when you were uh, uh, doing the past uh, positive well, test? I mean, yeah, we 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 had some. Um, we had some. We did very well though, um, and we um, that was something that. Um, was started on way before the kids even got back to school. Um, the university, you know, really, you know, let us do what we needed to do. Um, I have to give a shout out to, to um, Tidelands. Uh, they were there with the uh, with the testing um, that uh, really was um, Dr. Harmon down at um, down at uh, Tidelands. So you know, we were in in good shape. I mean, you know, I, I spent a lot of time along with the team that we assembled to, to make sure that we tried to make that um, situation as safe as possible. Um, and we did, we did very well um, with trying to keep that safe. Yeah, because um, I, I, didn't, I didn't hear anything in the news media that anyone um, had uh, uh, tested positive or whatever. I'm sure you were doing regular testing, right? I mean, oh yeah, I mean, we were testing, you know, um, we were testing uh, in 20, we were testing. So so our guidelines follow our conference guidelines, which follow the NCAA guidelines. And so back in 20, I mean, we were testing once or twice a week. Um, and then for the indoor sports, we were testing, you know, even more than that. So um, by the time we got back to school this school year, um, a large percentage of the student athletes had already been vaccinated. So yeah. we were in good that but still testing those with symptoms and, and those that were not vaccinated. So we did a good job. I mean, I'm proud of it. I'm really proud of it and uh, of what we were able to do. Well, you, you must have, because they 
this, I, at least I didn't read anything about it in, in, uh, in the news media. I didn't, you know, that, 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 uh, yeah. that well, CCU had the only, any, any issues at all. Right. Right. The only time that you'd really hear about that, Brother McQueen, is if a game had to be forfeited. And so that's when it would raise to the that. Um, so we were able to kind of keep pushing through and, and not have those issues. <laughs> that, yeah. Oh, okay. So that was the policy. Uh, it, it had to be a certain amount before they let allow the news media to know. Or well, no, it wasn't that. It was just that it never was a news story unless unless a game had to be forfeited. You know what I'm oh. saying? It, it was just assumed and assumed rightly that if there were no um, halting of games or that kind of thing, that it was under control. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about 120 football players. So, I mean, there's a lot of people. So, but again, yeah. it, 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 it all raises to the level of, did you have enough to stop? And we did. If you have enough. If you have enough cases. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's like with basketball. It's like with any sport. There's a certain number, then that's going to preclude you from playing. It's going to stop you from playing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we were, we were we were good. You're in good shape. Yeah. 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 So uh, that's a reflection of you, man. Of being, well, being the doc over there. It's a reflection <laughs> of the whole team. I very rarely will you ever hear me take credit for anything. Yeah. By well, myself. By, by myself. Well, um, absolutely. I know. Right. I know. By myself. Yeah. Uh, it's got to be a higher power. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, speak, speaking of vaccinations, right now in South Carolina, 64 64% of the population in South Carolina has had one dose. 54% of the population is fully vaccinated. Now, right now, as the definition of fully vaccinated goes, is either one Johnson Johnson or two Pfizer or Moderna. The CDC has been in, comp in, in talks about changing the definition of fully vaccinated to include a booster. Right now, um, that uh, that hasn't been changed, the definition, uh, but it may be changed in the future. Okay. Yeah. Um, right. But right now, 64% have had one dose and 54% have been fully vaccinated in South Carolina. Now, I'm going to flip this just a second to talk about not vaccinated. So in South Carolina, between November and December, there were over 17,000 reported cases of COVID. 17,000. 71% of those people were not fully vaccinated. 17,000, greater than 17,000 reported cases of COVID. And 71% of those were not fully vaccinated. And what was the was, was the recorded magnitude of the illness as a result of that? I'm going to get to that in a second. Of the greater than 600 people hospitalized with COVID during that time period, right. 64% were not fully vaccinated. That's greater than 600 people that were hospitalized with the diagnosis of COVID. 64% were not fully vaccinated. Okay? Okay. And of the 179 deaths during that time in South Carolina, 179 deaths related to COVID, 74% were not fully vaccinated. So what does that mean? That means that vaccine, if you don't get vaccinated, you're getting sicker. Now, uh, was it was it determined that they had underlining um, uh, they, conditions? They didn't, they didn't. They didn't give that kind of definite uh, that kind of determination on that. It's just whether COVID was a part of their diagnosis. Okay. A lot of them probably did have underlying conditions. A lot of them were probably over sixty five, over fifty. Um, but again, when you're talking about um, you know, three-fourths of the deaths during that time period 
the people were not fully vaccinated. That's that's amazing. Yeah. Amazing. So again, again, that's just, you know, one of the variables to look at about vaccinations, you know, and, and the and the um the uh effectiveness of them. Um you know, I'm on faculty at MUSC and they send out, you know, data which has been pretty similar to what I just read about the number right. of people that are um are um hospitalized on the ventilator um in the ICU and well over well over 70% of the time 75% of the time those people aren't vaccinated okay there you go your information is out here yeah all right yeah so yeah uh, uh doc we're approaching a half of our time and uh look man this information usually charged for, but you being free on. But I'm giving <laughs> it. Being free, I'm, being free on on on, uh, on WCM Live. It's on the get that free. I'm giving it to you free because of April Gardner, and I'm giving it to you free because of your wife. Okay. <laughs> now I have to tell you, it's 2022, and I still like like your wife better than I like you. Okay. Is, is that poet? Is is that poetic? Just for <laughs> you want to recite your poem or what? <laughs> yeah. So um, you know, I'm. Thank you for asking me to come on. Um, I think April and I had something going really good. You know, hopefully we'll be able to do a little bit more of that. You know um periodically from time to time but we did that for every friday for about 10 months or so and yeah, um absolutely. yeah yeah we tried to yeah. try to get as much information as we as we can um yeah. shout outs always to april garden and what she does and i always call her a mover and shaker and she knows how i feel about her and look, uh and everything. look, look our, our program that was uh, the mlk program yesterday um in, in conway uh from what she had laid out, man, uh, you know, she deserves uh, yeah. a whole lot of accolades, man. Really, okay. Yeah, I listened and, to uh, that. That was very, just absolutely um, fantastic how she did. Very, that. Yeah, okay. very good program, and absolutely, um, young buddy Alante did a good job. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, did a great absolutely. job. So, um, I know his well, uh, his mom and and grandparents and everybody a real uh real proud of him uh, out in Sand Ridge. Um, so, um, All right, man. Look, we, 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 on, uh, to our audience in, in Doc, um, we've got uh, uh, another great uh, guest com com coming up to, you'll really be proud of, of this organization, okay? So uh, again, thank you so much for joining us. And um, you know, you're always welcome. We always wanna have you to give us updates uh, with your statistics and, and the knowledge that you've gained because you're con continuously learning yourself. Yeah. And I, and right. I thank God, I thank God before I get off, I thank God because a year ago, this very time, very day I was in the hospital with COVID That's, myself. Yep. Absolutely. And, um, so I'm, I'm thankful. I wasn't quite sure I was going to make it out, but I knew I had some more things to do. Plus I felt like God wasn't finished with me yet. Um, Guess what? Guess what, man? I knew you were going to make it. Hey, I Remember nobody else knew? <laughs> I knew you were going to make it. Well, I, I appreciate I, that. I appreciate that. But like I said, I, you know. I, I, for, for some reason, I, I, I just knew uh, that, you know, I, I just knew we were going to pull out. But, uh, but anyway. We, I appreciate we'll, it. I appreciate it. Yes, Listen, you all, you all take care and um, um, tell the brother that's coming on. It's good talking to him, and I'll talk to him uh, soon. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Bye bye. So our uh, <coughs> thank Dr. McCarver for this uh, valuable information. Like again, sometimes information like that is priceless. You all should know that. Um, we're gonna take a, just a, a, a small commercial break, and uh, we'll be back with our our next guest. Uh, you, you're going to be uh, impressed. Okay. We'll be right back.
Oh, we're back. We're back. Good evening. We're back. Uh, again, I'm Ed McQueen, your host uh, of today's program. Um, as we left left off a few minutes ago, um, we said we were going to have our second guest and um, with some very, very, very impressive um, accomplishments, we think. Anyway, that's why we, we want to uh, hurry up and bring it and bring him and the organization on. So without further ado, let me uh, introduce to you, Mr. Harry St. John the <laughs> Third. Brother, you're, How you're you little, doing? Yeah, you're a little blurred there. I don't know what it is, but uh, it's not my age either. So, <laughs> How are you? Good, good, good. Yeah, you're, you're a little blurred. Yeah. You're still a little blurred. I don't know. Um, Getting a tiny bit better. Oh, this is technology here. I don't what I, okay. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, welcome to the program, uh, Brother St. John, Mr. Harry St. John uh, III. Uh, and he has been um, newly elected as the president of, <coughs> excuse me, the bomb. I, I, that's just the way I, I characterize it. The things that you guys are contemplating and the things that you got done off so far, and we're going to show the, the audience at least one thing that one of the things that uh, uh, was impressive that they've done as a as a community organization. Uh, it is the bomb, it's B O M B, which stands for Brothers of Myrtle Beach, and uh, it's uh, it's a year in the making, I believe, a, year, a, year, a little over a year as an organization, and. Uh, so without further ado, let me introduce you to uh, uh, Mr. St. John. So uh, welcome, uh, Harry. And um, if you don't mind, you can just tell us a little bit about yourself. I don't want to say it all. <coughs> I, I've got an overview, but uh, and then I'll uh, when you're finished, I'll um, and we'll have the audience engage, and uh, we can let them know uh, one of the accomplishments that I was impressed with uh, that, that's happened here here recently. And so um, on you, brother. Yeah, well, um, my name is Harry St. John III. I'm from a small town in Westchester County called Mount Vernon, New York. I call it Money Earning Mount Vernon. Um, I was born in Harlem, New York, but back in 1958 and um, lived in Mount Vernon most of my life. I wound up going to school at the University of South Carolina back in 1977. So I was there for a couple of years and I loved the South and always knew I was gonna come back to make South Carolina my home. And been here officially uh, November, 2018, moved here and it's been three years now that I've been living in South Carolina. Okay, well, um, what, uh I'm, I'm just going to, <clears throat> I want to tell the people about is it what I saw, what, what, it, what impressed me uh, the most, um, uh, Harry, and, and that was that uh, uh, on uh, uh, January 4th, which was a couple of weeks back, um, the, uh, you brought your group, well, you, you, you weren't there, but your group uh, came there, <coughs> your local group, excuse me, and uh, you just saw it saw it fit to um, to recognize and and um, and and and, and uh, award a young gentleman who was who was just a, a what we would call a more than productive uh, uh, part of the community. He, his journey was impressive for him to land at um, well after being in father's place. Uh, so, and what you, your group did was uh, awarded a, uh, a, a monetary award to a gentleman. Uh, the recipient was Michael Lance of Father's Place, and um, and he's a Conway native. Um, he was impressive uh, to the point that uh, your group saw it fit to so hey, um, let's uh, let, let's recognize him. And and let him know that um, that you all will be there for him. 
and resources as, as a community organization. So uh, let me back up a little bit. Uh, my, my understanding is that you started off with just as a golfing uh, um, organization, at least the local ones did. Is that correct? That is true. That is true. Um, we, I'm new to to the bomb. Actually, uh, been involved with the bomb. Um, August of twenty. Been involved with the bomb for about a year and a half. Um, we are to have fellowship. I'm breaking up on us there, uh, Brother Harry. Um, is that better? Uh, well, you're, you're still kind of blurred. I don't think the people have ever gotten your face yet. Um, okay, I'm you're sorry. getting better. Well, I don't know. Yeah, well, you're, get, you're getting better now. Yeah, better I'm closer to the screen. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, well. You were, you were much clearer. Let, let the people know that you were much clearer er, earlier as a, uh, when we were previewing you. So uh, yeah. I don't know what happened. I, I, didn't, I didn't mean anything different. But <clears throat> as I was saying, uh, we primarily came together to play golf and this group, like I said, a year and a half ago. But there are about six, seven gentlemen that I must mention that started the bump. Uh, Brother Kevin Healy. Calvin Mack, Ray Graham, Cecil, Ross Barnes, Mike, D. Gray. Those gentlemen started the bomb. They came uh, after just playing golf and they wanted to have a, a group or an organization that would come together and fellowship. And besides playing golf, we decided to uh, give back to the community because we were fortunate enough to be able to have worked and retired and now we're able to give back so that's what we ch chose to do so uh okay <coughs> excuse me um well and going back to the father's place uh what, what the organization did uh was that um the, well, the Father's Place used to have what they call two graduates per year, where they graduate uh, people uh, who's been in, in the Father's Place for a while. However, this this young man um, had graduated some time ago. So uh, as a young father listened attentive to each word, um, what he was saying caught the attention of everybody to see how he had grown physically, mentally, uh, and spiritually since the day he was surrounded by police and hauled off to prison, okay? The recipient's name is Michael Lance, uh, and they call him Mike Check at the place. Uh, and, and he's a Conway native. Uh, he's a father and a doting grandfather. Uh, Michael worked very hard, but not always in the areas he had hoped to travel. One day after being released from an eight year prison term, uh, Michael looked in the mirror and saw himself for whom he really is and what has changed his life for what he says is quote unquote forever. Uh, not only is he employed now, but after five years, he's still with the same employer. Two men and a truck, that's the name of the, uh, the company. You know, these are, are furniture movers, okay? And, uh, and, and listen to this, Michael has never been tardy, nor has he missed a day despite the fact that he has no car or car or driver's license, okay? Uh, he has earned numerous raises and incentives at this company. He also earned a place in the top 100 movers in the United States as verified by them, his employer, uh, Greg Stavisky, uh, who was right, right there by his side uh, doing this uh, reward, awarding, okay? Um, and uh, it was kind of like a surprise for him at this event at Father's Place, the name of the place is Father's Place. And he brought him to the event under the false pretense. Uh, but when Michael saw his mother coming into the place around the corner, Mike said he knew that something was up. So mm -hmm. we, all, we all got there and uh, I was part of the surprise of himself. Uh, so his mother, Ms. Maxine Smith, uh, she was so thrilled by, by what she had seen and hit the expression of himself. Uh, it, it, it was very, it was quite impressive, you know. Uh, 
so that moment reflected the uh, the fruits and labor of uh, his this fruits and labor. Okay, um, his fiance, uh, Miss uh, Liz Cunningham, uh, and joined into the event. Okay, uh, there there it is. That's the group there, uh, and of course we got uh, uh, Reverend Evans. Uh, who is the CEO? He's the first on the left, the CEO of Father's Place. Um, uh, he's a gem. He's a jewel in the community, man. I'll tell you. Um, and um, in that group, <clears throat> Michael is is the gentleman that's right in the middle, there with the gray with the gray hood. Um, and um, his employer is on the far right, the first uh, person on the far right there. Uh, uh, he was so impressed with him, he wanted to be part of the surprise, his surprise of doing that. So, uh, and congratulations to Michael. That's Michael there again. And there you have one of, one of your brothers there uh, making that award for him. This is Michael with his, his mom, uh, Ms. Maxine Smith, uh, on, the, on the far left, and his, uh, his, his, his fiance, Ms. Liz Cunningham, in the middle there. Um, uh, Michael gave a very, very moving speech uh, uh, about being grateful uh, about to the Father's place and so forth. So uh, congratulations to Michael again, and congratulations to uh, the bomb. Uh, find it ironic that that, that acronym comes out to be like that. <laughs> it, it is. <laughs> it, like brother, it is. You brothers wanted to be a bomb, didn't you? <laughs> that's, that's, it, it is, and, and that name was uh, a couple of gentlemen that I mentioned before, Kevin Haley and Ray Graham came up with the name The Bomb. Um, and it's it's apropos for what we do. Um, and Michael Lynn was uh, a worthy recipient for our uh, donations that we give every quarter. Yeah. Um, and we, we uh, vetted in to several you know, possible recipients and uh, one of the things that really impressed us about Michael was missing work uh, for five years and the situation that he was in with no car and that sort of stuff. And that really resonates with people, uh, especially in these days and times with being out of work. This brother has never missed a day and never without a, a vehicle. That's that's something that should be recognized. Should be recognized. Right. Should, should be recognized. I know you. I know you wish you were down at the time, but uh, I saw it seemed to me like you really missed that event. <laughs> yeah, I was. I was actually in New York visiting my grandkids and my yeah. children. I have five kids, so uh, they needed to see their their dad, and we needed to, to feel and touch everybody. So, so uh, yeah, a, a little bit more about. I know you've all, you 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 all been in existence only a year and a half, I believe, right? Something like that, two years. Yeah, we've actually. Like I said, Bomb actually came together in 2016. Well, you know, these gentlemen that I mentioned earlier, but we became a group or an organization around 2019. And Kevin Haley is our golf director. And he is the gentleman that really stirs the drink. He's the straw that stirs the drink as far as the Bomb is concerned. He's always out uh, canvassing and looking for new members and that's what we, we do. Golf is a, a great um, communicator, so to speak. It, it brings all nationalities together. And I always say when I speak to people about golf, the best thing about golf is really not the game of golf. It's the people it's that you meet. It's the camaraderie and the people that you meet. I play with judges. I play with doctors and lawyers. I play with a great athlete figures, Lawrence Taylor, Dr. J, Metal Lark Lemon. But we all have one thing in common, and we're all trying to get that little ball into that hole with the least amount of strokes. And it doesn't matter whether you're black, white, your nationality, your height, you're your fat, you're short, you're skinny. It's all about you trying to be skilled in, in that four and a half hours that you're out there on that green grass and the blue skies. And that's the thing that puts us all in the same boat together. We're, we're all coming in that venue. You know, you're not judged by how much money you make, what kind of car you drive. It's all about how well you navigate that course when you get out there. 
so, so what what kind of fundraising uh, you, you are contemplating or what kind of fundraising have you done in the past uh, to uh, get, get to the point like what you did at, at um, Father's Spring? I think it was a monetary award that, that um, was given to, to Michael. Um, yeah, what kind of what, what kind of fundraising uh, are you all do now? Well, we actually don't fundraise. We're we're a group. We're not a, a nonprofit organization or anything of that sort. We're just a bunch of brothers that come together and play golf um, predominantly. But at the same time, we're fortunate enough to be blessed. And most of us are retired. We do have some members that are younger, still working, but um, we've been fortunate and, and life has been good to us. And we come from all different parts of this country, from Chicago, Philly, New Jersey, New York, um, Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi. So we have people that come from all points. And now that we're here in South Carolina, it, it's our fortune to be able to give back to our community, which we are now a part of, and say that there are people that are worthy of getting help from us. And that's a great thing for us to be able to do, to give back. And I think that's the greatest thing that we can do because, you know, there but for the grace of God could go I. So yeah. whenever we find somebody who's worthy, we, we look out. Man, I, I wish you all could do that more often. And re that's the reason why I asked about uh, the fundraising, because th that will take some fundraising. Unless you, you you guys just go in your pocket when you see something, somebody like Michael, you just go in your pocket and say, hey, um, let's collectively um, award this person something because he deserves it. That's and, exactly, uh, yeah. exactly how it happens. We have about 60, close to 65 members. Uh, and we reach out to our members, our brothers and sisters. Right. We call the bomb the brothers of Myrtle Beach, but we do have some some sisters involved with our group. And we just put it out amongst our, our page. And we have a Facebook page that you can, you know, go on to. And we get together and we say, look, this is our cause for this quarter. And we ask for people. Five dollars, fifty dollars, a hundred dollars, whatever you can give, and we raise money that way. We don't go out and canvas for donations or have uh, or anything like that. Five hundred one c three. We just do it from the from the goodness of our hearts, and we reach deep into our pockets. Well, that's 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 very bodacious of you. <laughs> just go in your pocket, just like that. Okay. That's it. I, I mean. Yeah. To that, that, to, that's a method. That's a method that, that I don't think is, has, has been explored a lot. Um, because if you got mathematically, you got 60 or 70 members or 60 that are willing to do that. Hey, $20 a piece, you could give some, some guy like Michael, you know what I mean? That's 1200 bucks. Okay, right? <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, I mean, that's it. That's, we have to <laughs> Uh, members, but not everyone here in South Carolina, and we actually have more around, say, thirty members all times. So those people who are official members, and we, you know, we have a member team. We so. Yeah, you're kind of breaking up on the on the Harry, but that's okay. Yeah. Uh, so I was saying we have uh, an application process, and we charge fifty dollars, and all of those who pay that fee and sign the application become actual members of the bomb. So we have yeah. about thirty actual members that are paid, and then everybody else are associates of the bomb. Right. Hoping to what we call BBB, build bomb better. And which or bigger, we're trying to build bomb bigger and get more members. Um, and it's predominantly, like you said, through the game of golf. But it's 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 more than golf for us, and we give back and fellowship and and have camaraderie. So I knew I, I knew I was impressed with, uh, with that group for some reason, because <laughs> uh, we had never gone into depth about your organization. 
Okay. Um, so do you have any upcoming projects? Well, our upcoming project is to build our organization a little bigger as far as membership is concerned. So we're trying to at least increase our membership 10% this year. Um, we're always welcoming people to join the bomb and go through that application process and pay $50. And at the end of the year, which is coming up this Thursday, we have a membership appreciation celebration, which is going to be at the train depot this Thursday. So members that have gone through um, our year will be celebrated. And we're going to be of our former president to the new president, myself. And there's a couple of other uh, officers that will be uh, sworn in. President Leonard Ross, and then we have a secretary, Mr. Clay Osborne, and then we have our treasurer, new Mr. Um, uh, Julius Lambright. So, you know, we're 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 conscientious brothers that love the game of golf, and like I said, the best thing about golf is really not the game; it's really the people that you meet and the guys that are part of our group, and the ladies are fantastic individuals. They're great human beings. And that's the thing that stands out for me the most, that we are all concerned about our community and the people that are in it. But the thing that brings us together is golf. See, that's why we got you on the program, man. That, that, the community needs to know that. The community needs to be interested in something like that. As you can see, uh, Brother Kevin, miss you there as you read on the screen there, uh, was, said golf was once seen as a an icebreaker activity for the business professional. Is that still the case? And would you suggest young business-minded people considering learning the sport? You know, I, I, I'll relate you to a story. I, my parents sent me to a private school when I was in the 10th grade up in Massachusetts. I live in Mount Vernon. And the, the school had a country club as part of the campus. And it was a golf course. And I'm in the 10th grade. 15 years old, and I didn't think I would ever be playing golf. And I never even picked up a club. And I said to myself, I really wasn't going to be able to be afforded the ability to play because at that time, golf was a sport for rich white men. But as I fast forward, I, you know, I wish I had known what I then, what I know now. Um, but um, I started playing golf when I was 40 years old. I had an opportunity when I was 15, but I didn't play it until I was 40. And golf, there's so many things that happen out on the golf course as far as business is concerned. Um, so that's an icebreaker for sure, the game of golf. I met so many people through this game and we're all common. You know, nobody says I'm, I'm a doctor, I'm a lawyer, what have you. Uh, and you get to know an individual after you spent four and a half hours out on the course with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, man, Harry, look, man, um, it, it, it's, it's been a pleasure just having you on the program. And um, um, I'm glad I, I got to know the organization itself. Um, I was impressed. And I'm sure my co-host, April, was impressed. So, uh, which you met earlier. Um, so, we're... we're we hope to have you on again at some point with some new developments. I'm sure you're going to have new developments of, of uh, new award that you all are going to be given. Okay. Yes, we will. Um, so we will definitely be having an, another recipient. And, and like I said, that's what the bomb is all about. Giving back to the community at large. Yeah. We're all members of Myrtle beach and we want to make sure that our community. Hey, hey, Harry, I, I like that strategy, man. You don't have to go and have a fundraising event. <laughs> All you do is just ask somebody to come up, hey, let's give $25, $30 a piece, about 60 people. <laughs> you know, you you know, you got a thousand or so, you know, go back start that's, working again. That's <laughs> it. It's that simple. It's that simple. Just that simple. We, we, mix, we mix do it from our heart. Everybody. From your heart, man. Okay, man, look. Uh, Congratulations again and Godspeed and 
uh, again, and we'll be we'll be talking more. Uh, we got communication. We got your e some of the emails from some of your members, and we'll be communicating uh, on, a, on a very frequent basis. Okay. Thank you so much for having me on. And like I said, we want to do BBB, Bill Bomb Bigger. So thank you again for putting this on. All right, the bomb. All right. <laughs> okay. Thanks so much again, Harry. And uh, we'll we'll see you. Uh, and man, that was some kind of interview there. Uh, and to our our our, uh, our viewers, uh, we have guests like that because uh, we think the information that is that they spit out sometime like that. Um, you you never know who it reaches, um, and and what that person can do with that type type of information. So it's not wasted. Um, so anyway, our time is up, and uh, with uh, many many thanks to my co-host, uh, Miss April Garner. <laughs> she she's <laughs> she's be behind the scenes today, and um, and to all of our viewers, thank you so much for tuning in today. And we'll see you next week uh, at the same time. Oh, um, oh, we've got uh, some community announcements, okay? Oh, I'm grateful God, just about to leave that. Um, so let's, let's start with some community announcements. What do you say? And we will. Don't go away. Don't go away. We have some some announcement coming up, and um, you know, while they're while they're being prepared, the um, again congratulations to the MLK committee yesterday, uh, and, and over, over the weekend, what a, a fantastic um, uh, uh, effort and fantastic program that went so very well, especially on Monday and Saturday. Um, again, and here it is right here. We got the live. Um, this this on on Monday, uh, January seventeenth, which was yesterday, uh, we had uh, the map the 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 mass <coughs> the MC. You're gonna enjoy this young man, okay? You're gonna be impressed with this young man, okay? Uh, Master Alante James, and uh, he was kind of like the master of ceremonies, and um, guided it very well. Um, congratulations, uh, brother, uh, oh, Master Alante. So, and, and we had as um, as guests, uh, we had Dr. Sean Johnson, uh, Dr. Lakeisha Hudson, uh, Dr. Blaine Spain was an absent, but his information was read. Um, of course, uh, Mr. Kevin Mishu, and and lo and behold, we had our two ordinate um, political shakers in Conway now. Um, uh, the infamous <laughs> Councilman Larry White <laughs> and our newly elected council, Councilwoman, okay, uh, Amanda Butler. Congratulations to uh, Ms. Butler again for being, uh, for being elected and hope you, hopefully uh, uh, you're gonna carry on some good things for us back in the community here. And um, the uh, um, the 2022 MLK Celebration keynote speaker <clears throat> was finding friends, creating coalition and stitching strategies, um, organ organizing lessons from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, Ms. Melissa Harry will be th th this this Saturday, January 22nd. Okay, uh, Ms. Melissa Harris Perry, PhD. She's a noted scholar, television host, political commentator, and public intellectual. Now, if you don't know, if you don't, if you've never heard her, uh, you 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 in for a treat, okay? Oh, it's, it's this Saturday uh, at the Wheelwright Auditorium at 7 p.m. At, at Coastal Carolina University. Ms. Harris will be the keynote speaker there. And. Of course, um, also on Sunday, January 23rd, 
the mighty Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Inc. and the Conway Myrtle Beach Alumni Chapter uh, presents a very formal and informational meeting. Uh, t-shirt, tie, jacket, and mask required. Not t-shirt, but okay. Shirt, tie, <laughs> jacket, and mask required. This Sunday, uh, Sunday on January 25th at 4 p.m. It'll be at the Coastal Carolina University Science Center. That's that uh, most specific location is on 301 Ally Drive, which you get on the on university's grounds, okay, in Conway, South Carolina. It's at the Coastal Carolina University Science Center. Um, the ushers are uh, United Spectacular Helping uh, Encourage Respect and Structure. That's an acronym. The OSHA is an acronym for that. And it's a group that has outreach services and local churches in order to save a child's life. The whole village is needed here. Saturday, March 19th, 2022, it will be at the Wastonia Was Recreation Center at 100 Recreation Place in Marion, South Carolina. We, I'm really glad to put Marion on, on, uh, on our communication list here. Uh, it's in Marion at 100 Recreation Place in Marion, South Carolina. Guest speaker, Ms. Glenda Skipper. Uh, one child at a time. Other on-site representatives will be there, DSS, DJJ, and Marion County Sheriff Department. So save our children. It'll be from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. This event is open to the public and refreshments will be available. Gatekeepers Foundation Building and Future Protection. You can reach these people at Kenoff, K-E-N-O-U, K enough, okay, K E N O U G H one at gmail.com. Sex trafficking awareness event. For more information, contact Kenneth Hughes uh, at 843 230 0894. Again, 843 230 0894. There you have it. And again, we're out of time. So uh, thank you so much for uh, uh, listening to us uh, during uh, uh, our show today. Um, you can also get us on wcmagazine.net. If you didn't catch us all today, uh, it will be replayed on uh, our website, wcmagazine.net. So all you got to do is just press that on. It'll take you straight there. And there's a lot of other stuff there that you could um, really enjoy. And we've had um, we've got uh, shows from the past there for the past I guess month or so. A, a weekly program again. Now we're every Tuesday at seven p.m. Okay, every Tuesday at seven p.m. So we bid you a uh, good evening and Godspeed, and hope to see you again next week at the same time, um, right here on WCM. Borough Community Magazine live. I'm your, I'm your host, Ed McQueen. Um, we'll see you next week. Godspeed. Thank you for watching the World Community Magazine's Hour of Power Live on Facebook with your host, Edward McQueen and April Garner.